Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with focaccia. That's right, I can't believe I have not made this yet. It is so easy, so delicious, and extremely dimpled. And unlike the chin of your favorite action movie star, these dimples are not just for looks. They're going to serve several very important purposes. But you know what? We're getting ahead of ourselves. Before you can dimple dough, you have to make dough to dimple. So that's what we're going to start here. We're going to add one package of dry active yeast to a bowl. And then we're going to pour over a cup of very warm water. You want to shoot for about 105 degrees. And that's going to ensure that yeast starts growing at a nice rapid rate. All right, so we're going to take our whisk, give that a nice stir. And then we're going to add some more stuff. The first of which would be some olive oil. And this is just going to be the first of many olive oil additions in this recipe. There is a lot of olive oil in this, which is just one of the reasons it's so good. We're also going to need some salt, of course. And then I'm going to dump in some semolina flour. Don't worry, you have a little bit in the back of the cupboard from when you tried to make pasta. Okay, so we're going to give that a mix with the whisk. And then we're going to add something that's an optional ingredient. If you're doing plain focaccia, you don't have to do this. But I'm going to toss in some finely minced rosemary, which I think is quite beautiful in this. And then last but not least, some bread flour. And then all we need to do is grab a wooden spoon or a spatula and mix this in the bowl until it sort of comes together into a thick, sticky dough and it becomes just too hard to stir. And at that point, we're going to dump this onto our work surface and start the kneading process. Okay, so make sure your hands are very well floured. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start kneading that dough. And it's going to be too wet and too sticky when you start. But as you do this, every time it gets too sticky, too hard to work with, you'll simply give it another dusting of flour. All right, not too much, just enough to knead it. Generally better to have your dough a little too sticky than a little too dry. I think that goes for most bread making in general, but especially with focaccia. And as soon as we knead it smooth, and it just starts to get a little bit elastic, and it looks something like that, which probably took about two or three minutes of kneading to achieve, we're gonna stop and we're gonna knead in some olive oil. All right, so the original base of the dough has olive oil, but we're also gonna introduce a couple tablespoons during this kneading process. So I'll do this in two additions. I'll drizzle over about a tablespoon, all right, both sides, and I'll knead that in. And once that's completely disappeared, I'll knead for about another minute. Then I'll usually give it a little more flour if it needs it. Or if yours doesn't, don't. But mine was feeling just a little too soft and sticky. And once all that's been kneaded in, and it is soft and smooth again, we will introduce the last of the olive oil. And then same drill, just keep kneading and kneading. Again, only adding additional flour if it gets too impossible to work with. And after about seven or eight total minutes of kneading, you should have a very soft, supple, sticky, and incredibly sexy dough. It should be fairly elastic. If you poke your fingers and it just leaves a big dent, you need to work it a little more. But right there, mine was perfect. All right, at that point, we're going to take a bowl. We're going to drizzle in some olive oil. We're going to throw the dough in, drizzle over more olive oil. And I warned you about the olive oil. It's a recurring theme. So we're going to coat that generously. We're going to make sure the entire surface is totally covered. I'm going to pat that down a little bit. We're going to cover that with foil. And we're going to let that rise in a warm place for about an hour or until it doubles. Now, I do mine in the oven. The oven's off, of course. And mine took about an hour, hour, 15 minutes. Yours might take two hours. Who knows? But when you're done, it's going to look like this. Next, I want you to lightly oil a sheet pan with a little bit of olive oil. And then we're going to dump our dough on the pan. And then we're going to press it down into sort of a rectangular shape. And the main purpose here is to knock out all the air. So really press it down good. And don't worry about trying to get a perfect rectangle. Perfectly shaped focaccias are annoying, so just get it close. And then we're going to cover it loosely with plastic wrap and just let it rest for 15 minutes. So this is not really an extra rising. We're just going to let it sit covered for 15 or 20 minutes. And yes, it will rise up a little bit, but we were mostly just letting the dough relax. And at that point, yes, you guessed it, more olive oil. We're going to drizzle on olive oil all over the surface. We're going to spread it around lovingly with our fingertips. And then, for by far the best part of the entire recipe, the dotting of the dough. Although I really don't like that term, it's more of a poke. All right, so you're going to take between one and five fingers and press them into the dough all over. And we're not just making some shallow depressions. I want full penetration. I want those fingertips going all the way down to the pan. So I'll usually do it with multiple fingers first and then start hunting and pecking with one finger looking for spots I missed. And not only is this pushing more olive oil into the dough, which is going to create an even better texture, but it's also going to cook faster and more evenly because we'll have a more efficient transfer of heat. And once we have an absolute and complete poking of the surface, 
I'm going to go ahead and put that back in the oven. Again, the oven's off. This is just for rising. And we're going to let that proof for about 45 minutes or until it looks like that. It should just about double in size and it should look incredibly interesting. People that don't cook don't get to see things like this. I mean, how sad is that? So maybe if you do make this, invite a friend over who you think has never baked in their life and watch their face light up. That's a fun thing to do once in a while. Now at this point, you're going to preheat your oven to 475 because we are in the final stages. So to finish this off, I'm going to sprinkle the top with some more finely minced rosemary. And then, yes, you guessed it, one last olive oil application. But this time you got to be really careful. I'm just dripping a little bit, brushing it very, very lightly. I'm just using the tips of the brush. And yes, a little bit of olive oil will well up in those little dimples. Perfectly normal and desirable. And then last but not least, traditionally these are dusted with some sea salt. And you want to use something that has a nice big flake to it. And because it is such a large grain salt, it looks like we're putting on a ton. But it's really not that much. So give it a decent sprinkling with the sea salt. And then you're going to pop that in your very well preheated 475 degree oven for 15 minutes. Or until it looks like this. I'm predicting it's going to be golden brown and incredibly gorgeous. But let's not stand around patting each other on the back. Let's go ahead and take a brush. And while it's warm, brush on just a little more olive oil. And I know what you're thinking. We've already applied olive oil five times. Do we really need it applied a sixth time? Yes. Yes, you do. And at that point, we're going to simply transfer that to a cooling rack. And when it's cooled down, you're ready to cut into one of the world's great breads. So let me cut this up and you can see that beautiful, beautiful texture. That olive oil drenched surface is a little bit flaky, a little bit crusty. And inside it's going to be incredibly light, incredibly tender, with just a beautiful rich taste and texture. And it's funny, I always get like a buttery flavor from focaccia, which is weird because there's no butter in it. But it really does have that kind of richness to it. So really, really nice. Of course, you can make an amazing sandwich out of this. And we'll talk about it on the blog, but there's like a million toppings you can do for these. Just makes for a great change of pace from the regular breads. And I'm not sure when you're watching this, but I'm making this in the summer. And summer eating means lots of salads. And there's very few breads that are as good at soaking up salad dressing as focaccia. So I really hope you give your fingertips a little thrill and give this delicious flatbread a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com to get all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.